نحمدہو نحمدہو و نسلی و نسلم علی رسوله الكریم الحمدللہ نحمدہو و نستعینہو و نستغفرہو و نؤمن بیوی و نتوکلو علی اللہم صلی علی سید مولان محمد عبدک و رسولک نبی الامی و علی آلی و اصحابی و بارک و سلم قال اللہ تبارک و تعالی عز و جل فی القرآن المجید والفرقان الحمید و تعاونو علی البر و التقوى و لا تعاونو علی الاثم والعدوان صدق اللہ العلی العظیم ببرکت ان اللہ و ملائکتہو یسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلمو تسلیما اللہم صلی علی سید مولانا محمد عبدک و رسولک نبی الامی و علی آلہ و اصحاب و بارک و سلم السلاة والسلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ السلاة والسلام علیکہ یا حبیب اللہ السلاة والسلام علیکہ یا نبی اللہ و علی آلکہ و اصحابکہ یا نور اللہ السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالی برکاتہ Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah Azza wa Jal, the Master, the Creator, the Sustainer, the Protector, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the Healer, the one who gives cure, the one who is first and the one who is last, the one who has no beginning and has no end, the one who is the light of the heavens and the earth, the one who whom the heavens and the earth and everything that it contains belongs to him. And blessing salutation will say that Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. For he Allah azawajal is true. And his book is true. And his speech is true. And his prophets are true. And heaven is true. And hell is true. And prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is true. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide us to the path of those we guided before us. And Allah Ta'ala protects us as those He protected before us. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He friends us and befriends us the way He befriended those before us. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to send salutation and blessings on the final messenger. The one who is dear to our hearts, our master, the master of the prophets, the last of the messengers, the seal of prophethood. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Blessing and salutation be upon the parents of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Upon his blessed wives, upon his children, upon the companions, and all of the ulama and the awliya of this nation. Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah azza wa jal. Allah ta'ala has allowed us to come once again on this beautiful day, on Friday. The Friday which is the Leader of all of the ayams. Friday which is the leader of all of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Friday which we know as Jumu'ah or Juma. And we know in the Quran Allah ta'ala has mentioned a surah which is named after this day Friday. So all praise to Allah who allowed us to come to the Friday prayer. All praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who allowed us to witness these moments again, because we know in Friday there is such a moment that when one supplicates to Allah, the supplication is accepted. Alhamdulillah, the ayat I recited, Allah mentions, Ta'awanu alal birri wa taqwa. The help one another in birr, in righteousness, in good deeds. Wa taqwa and God consciousness. Wa la ta'awanu. And do not help one another in ithm and udwan, in sin and transgression. This ayat Allah Ta'ala is mentioning in the Quran, is teaching us something that we support one another in goodness, in piety, in taqwa, and we do not support one another in ithm, in sin and transgression. As we know, the month that is approaching us, the month of Rajab, which is a sacred month, which is a blessed month, and in this month, there was a sacred night that took place where the Prophet ﷺ went on this 
journey, miraculous journey from Isra wal Miraj to Masjid Haram to Masjid Aqsa and then beyond the heavens. But whilst on this journey, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had seen many, many signs. And when they came back and they informed the Ummah of these signs. This ayat I'm mentioning, he is mentioned that we do goodness. So we want to talk about goodness, that we stay away from transgression and sin. Sometimes it is easy to implement the goodness so somebody can pray easily. So they can come to the five daily prayers and read Salah. They can recite the Quran sitting at home and they can read the Quran. They can fast in the month of Ramadan. They can give charity. They can do the Hajj and go to Umrah many, many times. So goodness is easy, achievable, and one can do this. Regularly, can keep a beard and have a mama sharif and dress accordingly to the way Islam teaches us. But to avoid sinning, to avoid sins and transgression, this is a difficult part. The thought people do, but that thing that Allah Ta'ala has prohibited not to do, that is a difficult part. We can follow, we can do the goodness, but can we avoid the sins and transgression? Those Allah Ta'ala has told us not to do. We may read prayer, we may fast in the month of Ramadan, but we continue to commit sins. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi mentioned that support your brother whether he's unjust or be the victim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi was asked, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that how we can, we know the one who's being oppressed, that we try to move the oppression away, but how shall we support the one who's doing the oppression? And the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala said, that help him stop from this. So he stays away and does not commit this sin. How many times we see in our community sins being committed, we turn a blind eye to them. How many times do we see wrong actions taking place in our, ho in our houses, in the masjid, in our community, but we turn a blind eye to them. When we see the goodness, yes, we praise them. When we see evil, we, we imagine or we see that we do not even see this. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, when they went to Miraj, the Messiah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi mentioned that I went past a community and I want to mention four Hadith leaves. And they said, I seen a community who was being hung by the chest. You know, the chest at the front. And they said, I went past men and women who were being hung by the chest. And I asked for Jibreel Alayhi Salaam, that who are these people that they've been hung by the chest and been tortured in this way? And the Prophet and Jibreel Ali Salam said that these are the ones who slander people with false allegations in the presence and speak ill against them behind their backs. Regardless, these people Allah Azawajal said about these people in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala mentioned, War to the one who, who scorns the people openly, bad mouths them in their absence. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala has seen a community when they went to Miraj. We talk about the blessings of Miraj. We talk about the gift that we got of Salah. We talk about if you do one good deed, is equal to 10 good deeds. But at the same time, when the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala went on this journey, they witnessed this. They witnessed people who were being drugged by the chest. They seen people who, who were being hung by the chest, men and women. And who were these people? They were those people who speak ill. They slander. Slander meaning when they see somebody successful or unsuccessful, they put false allegations and the blame upon them. Now these people in them, themselves can be in that situation where the blame should come onto them. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi witnessed this. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that when I went to Miraj on Layla to Miraj, the night of ascension, I came across such a nation that they were scratching their faces and chest with nails made of copper. Now imagine this for a moment, you cannot scratch your face with the nails that Allah Ta'ala has given you. Sometimes when you scratch, you start to bleed. <coughs> On that day, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala has mentioned a, a community, a people whose nails are made of copper and they're scratching their face. They're scratching their chest until they're bleeding. And I asked, oh Jibreel, who are these people? And he replied, they used to eat the flesh of humans, meaning backbite. And they would tarnish their honor. Allah said in the Quran, Wala yakta ba'dukum ba'da. Do not backbite one another. Now in our community, sometimes we think, you know, when we mention this, the thing about these are all things, oh, it doesn't matter, everybody's doing it. 
Everybody's in this. It doesn't matter, you know. But ask yourself the question that would you like any one of you? Would you like to eat the meat of your dead brother? Even once? Would you like to do this? Allah Ta'ala informs her, You would dislike this. And even imagine this and thinking to eat the flesh of your dead brother. Nobody wants to do this. Allah just said to us in the Quran, do not, do not backbite one another. Do not tarnish the honor of one another. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned this, that when they went to Miraj, they had seen them people scratching their faces and their chest until they were bleeding. And the people who tarnish the honor of other people, not understanding the why it's going to cause, what implication to be upon the life of an individual or even upon them. I will mention some, those people who do this, what danger they put themselves into. Those people who do this, we are listening to the trauma that we'll have in the hereafter. But even in the dunya, you can tell by them people by looking at the faces who they are. Sometimes we as individuals might fall into this. Maybe the husband might backbite about the wife and speak ill about, about his wife. Sometimes the wife might be speaking ill about the husband. Sometimes might be speaking maybe by your mother-in-law that she's like this and she says to my wife behave in a certain way and do this or maybe her sisters are like this or sometimes if you have a business you speak about the other business that oh he has a business and he does this and he's trying to uh, compete <laughs> with me and he's like this and what he does is wrong maybe we see in our society those who are different levels or whatever field you may be in you may speak about the other person like this. But Allah is saying, Wala yakta ba'dukum ba'da. Do not backbite by one another. Imagine the torment on the day of judgment that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam witnessed. Having copper nails and scratching your face and your chest. Not only this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that on the night of Miraj. That this took place on the night of Miraj. We hear the blessings of Miraj. The Salat we go, yes, we pray five times a day. We do deeds, so they multiplied by 10. But what about this one? The Prophet Sallallahu is witnessing and they're allowing the Ummah to know that do not indulge yourself in these acts. The Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that in the night of Miraj, I was made to travel through the heavens. And I came across a nation that was being fed flesh, cooked from their own sides. And they were told, eat as you used to eat the flesh of your brother. I asked, O Jibreel, who are these people? He replied, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, they used to backbite against people. <clears throat> there are them people who used to backbite and do ghibat. There are them people who have been given, the, they're given their own meat to eat. Try to bite onto your hand for a moment. Put your thumb into your mouth and try to bite upon it. How painful it is. Now imagine, on this night the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala says that the flesh of the body has been cut and they've been told to eat this. Would somebody like to do this? You would dislike this. If you bite your thumb and you know the pain. But imagine eating your own flesh. These are them people who used to backbite the brothers. And sometimes you come, you want to listen to a speech. You know where I'm praising and saying, Oh, mashallah, you're going to Jannah. You do five daily prayers. The month of Miraj is coming. The month of uh, uh, Ramadan is approaching and soon we're going to fast and Allah is going to forgive our sins. Yes, all that is true. Allah Azawajal will forgive but where Allah Ta'ala has told us orders to carry out at the same point Allah Ta'ala has told us provisions, things that we need to avoid. Allah Ta'ala has gave us goodness and He's told us things that we avoid. In another hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala actually mentioned whoever eats the flesh of his dead brother backbites in the world. The brother will be close to him on the day of judgment and he, the backbiter, will be ordered and told, eat his body just as you used to eat it in the, eat his body during his lifetime. Now imagine e eating the flesh of your brother. This is a Muslim brother that we backbite and talk about. And one scholar says, 
He says, I'm surprised of individuals. You know, people who point fingers at pious individuals. Not knowing how many times it happens that somebody might come to Mawlana for a masla and you know, Mawlana might say, I don't know, or I will research and let you know. And they go and show, Mawlana Masla ni shipata. He didn't know. So he goes to somebody else or he's inquired in three places before and then he rings you and he wants to ask you. And then he says, oh, I knew this already. Actually, I checked in the book, I was just checking. And they want to try you like this. And many, many times, one scholar says, he says that I'm surprised at those individuals who will point fingers at pious individuals for performing permissible acts. Acts that they do that which are permissible. But do not consider the worst of wrong deeds that they do themselves. They may be indulged in themselves, in backbiting, in tail bearing, in jealousy, in hatred, in fraud, in arrogance, in self-appreciation. And they'll have no re remorse or any uh, re regret or any repentance. Now we see our community is in this. We are indulged in these evils of the heart, of the dunya, and many times we will be part of this. But Allah is reminding us that when the month of Rajab is coming, so imagine when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went to Miraj and he witnessed all this. And when he came back, he informed the community, this is what I have seen. And all those who indulge themselves into these sins, and the many, many sins, and one is just a ghibat because this is arm, it's actually worse than even committing fornication. Imagine, Na'uz Billah, zina, without a marriage, sleeping with somebody. And when somebody is speaking to him, he's backbiting, imagine he's committing zina in front of you. It's actually worse. How many times have we said to somebody, please, Zakallah, let's talk something good. I don't want to talk about this subject. Let's talk the subject. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about your business. Let's talk about how, you, how are you doing. How is your fun book? Sometimes we like to hear because our ears are used to this now. So when they talk about a certain business, a certain individual that we don't like, so we want to listen and say, yeah, tell me more. Yeah, what happened to him? Yeah, tell me, what did he do? Okay? And we start, we want to listen. And that gives a sense of, because uh, we don't like him, it gives us you know, happiness. So when we see other people struggling, it gives a sense of happiness. But Muslims are not like this. When we see somebody struggling, we need to go forward and help him out. Help him in goodness. In God conscious brother, don't bite him, he might not know. He might not even know he's backbiting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked that, you know, backbiting, what about if the individual has this act in him? So whatever I'm telling somebody, he has this in him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that that is backbiting. And if he doesn't have it in him, then it's slander. You're tarnishing his reputation. That is slander, that's bukhtan, and that is another sin in itself. So meaning, control your tongues. It's mentioned that those who commit and indulge themselves in this despicable act, that all the community, we see even the, uh, those who we think are good, and even those in the street and everywhere we see they uh, our houses, in our schools, our community, our socializing places where we sit, at the tea shop, at the coffee shop, at the masjid, we'll see people and we indulge in this. And we listen, we pretend, we, I didn't hear nothing. And then we just go away, we'll turn a blind eye. Everybody knows for themselves. But it's mentioned that those who do this, just a glance at what happens to the individual who does backbiting. He slanders others. And these are different narrations from Hadith Sharif and of the pious ulama who have mentioned them. That he who is going to slander and backbite, that Allah Azawajal is mentioned that these things will be in his heart. Number one, it destroys his faith. He may be doing good acts. And actually the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that, do you know who the bankrupt is? If I see a bankrupt straight away, money comes to our mind, gold comes to our mind, houses and businesses come to our mind. 
He said, do you know who the bankrupt is on the day of judgment? They said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the individual? They said, on the day of judgment, there'll be an individual. He comes with his salat. So mashallah, he's doing five daily prayers. He has not missed a single prayer. He actually stood in the first row and he prayed with the individuals. He performed hajj every single year, he went to hajj. He never missed a fast or Ramadan. He was an individual who recited Quran during the nights. He was an individual who stood for tahajjud. He was an individual, the only good act of charity that took place, he was the first one. He comes with all these good deeds on the day of judgment. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that he has spoke ill about somebody. He did backbiting. He slandered. He tarnished the reputation of an individual. On the day of judgment, his good deeds shall be given to those people he talked about and he committed these offenses against. Until he'll have nothing left. He'll have no salat, no fasting, no hajj, no, no charity, nothing left. He's a bankrupt and he shall enter into the hellfire. So there's a chance that we'll destroy his faith. Not only this, there's a chance that towards the end of his time, he may not even get the kalima to read. He may not be able to be the one who recites the kalima and enters into Jannah. He might be someone who excessively backbites and his supplication shall not be accepted. Many times we do dua, but we have done ghibat a bit ago. We have swore at somebody. We have done so many wrong acts and then we supplicate Allah with the same mouth. Asking Allah Zawajal, Imagine you've just ate the flesh of your dead brother. Now you supplicated Allah Zawajal. How do you want Allah Zawajal to accept your prayer? So the person's du'as are not accepted. Not only this, backbiting deprives one from the blessings of Salah and Psalm. You may be praying, but your namaz will not be accepted. You may be fasting, your Psalm shall not be accepted. That's what backbiting does to you. It erases the good deeds. And it devours the good deeds. It's mentioned that it was asked by uh, to one of the great ulama about backbiting. He said, if I were to backbite, I would backbite about my mother. If I want to do ghibat, I'll do ghibat about my mother. I know she's like, you guys are astonished and thinking, what is he saying? Because once you backbite, all of the good acts that you've done, your namaz, your salat, hajj, it goes into the account of the person that you've been backbiting about. So who would, your, who would you want your namaz go to? To your enemy or go to your mother? Now you're backbiting by your enemy, somebody you don't like, an individual, and you've just prayed, the swab of your prayers is going to go into his account. You'd rather have that swab going to the account of your mother. So he says, if I want to backbite, I'll backbite by, by, about my own mother. So my good deeds, my hajj, my namaz, my roza, zakat, recitation of the Quran, salat, Salam, Jamaat, all this goes into my mother's account and not into the account of anybody else. So next time when you back by, think for a moment that my namaz I've just done, I've done the Jummah prayer, it's just going to the account of my, the person I probably don't like. Not only this, even if the backbiter repents, he does Tawbah, and Allah is the one who accepts the Tawbah, it is mentioned that he'll be the last person to enter paradise. He'll be the last person to enter paradise even if he does Tawbah. Backbiting is absolutely haram because Allah Azawajal mentioned in the Quran, do not backbite. It's a major wrongdoing that condemns one to and it takes one to the hellfire. Not only this, it's worse than fornication I've mentioned to you. If backbiting was to put into an ocean, it's mentioned that the ocean would smell foul. The ocean would smell like this, a foul smell. On the day of judgment, you'll see the people who backbite. And we even say to people who backbite us, well, this is he has a foul mouth. We don't see it, but we use it like this person is always talking about other people. He's swearing, he has no respect, he doesn't know how to talk. Always when he hear, he attacks individuals. And he thinks he's doing a goodness. And we, he's sitting, we might be involved in this. And we truly need to repent to Allah and do tawbah. And all, we all also need to apologize to individuals if we have done ghibat. And we have tarnished his reputation that we apologize to him. Not only this, it is mentioned that backbiter will be made to eat the dead in hellfire. The backbiting is like eating the dead body of the brother. Backbiting, it brings punishment in the grave. 
backbiting is mentioned to be one of the worst sins and he shall be forced to eat the flesh. So we need to ask ourselves questions that we come and we listen to these. You know, beyond, do we implement this? Allah Ta'ala is ordered to be, you know, help one another in, in goodness. So next time somebody tries to backbite, we say to please, talk goodness. And many of the times we see our mobile phones and we need to ask ourselves a question and especially when the month of Ramadan comes, you know, there's the messages that go around. And many times the message is going about individuals and we don't even check. We've heard something, been said so and so, and the message passed on. This one more thing is mentioned that the backbiter, he shall be the monkey of hell. So imagine the guy's backbite looking for the moment if you know he's, he's the monkey of the hellfire. And the backbite is to be the first one who shall enter into the hellfire. It's mentioned, and one scholar mentions, he says, there are three people whose dua is not answered in the dunya. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, you know, we do many times, we do supplication and duas. We say, oh, my dua has not been accepted. Number one, he who eats haram. We might be indulged in this. We say, everybody's doing koni, it's okay. It's all right to go to McDonald's and KFC and, and the rest. One who backbites, he backbites about his brother, be his wife, mother-in-law, any individual. And one who has hatred or jealousy in his heart towards his Muslim brother. And we're going to mention that we see the month that is approaching you know, soon. Messages start going around on the mobile phone and this has become another way. So we don't even have to leave home now to backbite. So sometimes we're not saying we have to backbite with our mouth. We have to talk to individuals, stand to them. You know, the tea shop or outside and talk. Sometimes you have your mobile phone and you can send a WhatsApp message. You can send a text message. You have the Instagram and you have all these ways of communicating. And you're sitting at home and sending a message by individual. And that message received is received by so many. Ask yourself a question. We have the mobile in our pockets, everybody. Now what's contained in your mobile? Is it bir and taqwa? Is there goodness in this? Is there consciousness in this? Or is there Islam and Udwan? Is there sin and transgression in your mobile phone? How many of you sitting here, we've got our mobile phones. In our mobile phones, we'll have indecent photography in the mobile phones. We'll have videos that we're not supposed to watch. We'll have backbiting, lying, and all these sins in our mobile phone. We're carrying it in our pocket and it's next to our chest, next to our pocket, sometimes next to the chest. And we're carrying and bringing it to the masjid. Ask yourself, what is your mobile doing for you? Now, you know, as individuals, the message that we receive every single day, I receive so many. You know, talking about this, is, this event's taking place and so-and-so is doing this and he's doing this. Now, we carry the mobile phone with us. When you get this message, if you pass on the message, you're going to get either the same, if it's good, if it's hadith, it's authentic. And sometimes you love a hadith coming in the month of uh, Rajab, that, oh, he who gives a Mubarak, is the first one to give Mubarak about Ramadan, the Prophet said he's going to enter Jannah. I've never read a hadith like this and I've never heard it from the ulama ikram. Or they make things up and they associate with Allah and the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa Ask yourself, it is sufficient for a person to know that he's ignorant, that whatever he receives, he forwards it to the next person. That's also ignorance, no matter who you are. Now when you get a message, you need to look. Is it authentic? Is it not authentic? This hadith is not authentic. If you think it's not, then delete it from your mobile phone. Why store it onto your mobile phone? Maybe somebody else might get this and they'll pass it on. So we have the message and we need to ask ourselves that what is my mobile doing? How does it act? What do I receive on this? What do I hear upon this? If there is any indecent messages, photos, videos that I receive every single day and everybody knows sitting here because everybody's on WhatsApp nowadays. Even the elders, you know, they have on, you know, WhatsApp messages and Okay, chart and everything else from the youth to the old. Now you need to ask what's in here. Go home today, do toba, repent. Any indecent pictures, messages, videos, delete them. This is your toba. That's what you need to do. And then do not let anybody send. If anybody does send you, say, please, brother, I'm either gonna you know, cut you off if you have something good. 
Please forward, forward that to me. Or if you have nothing good, please do not send me any of these messages. We ask Allah, Allah Ta'ala allows us template what I've said myself first. That Allah Ta'ala allows to witness the beautiful month that's coming, the month of Rajab. And then the month of Shaban and the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah, those who are ill, Allah Ta'ala cures them. That those who are in debt, Allah Ta'ala removes the debt away. Those who have pious offspring, Allah Ta'ala grants them offspring. Those who are struggling, Allah Ta'ala removes the struggle away from the dunya. Those who are in hospitals, Allah Ta'ala gives them relief, Allah Ta'ala gives them good strength. Those who are weak in faith, Allah Ta'ala strengthens them. Those who are struggling around the world, we say to Allah Ya Allah on this beautiful day, that you, you free them and you bless Pakistan and, the, and Kashmir and Syria, that you protect the Muslims there. And whatever we ask Allah to protect all of the Muslim community, we ask Allah that Allah Ta'ala allows this country to see the sweetness of Islam. And they also follow Islam. We ask Allah that Allah Ta'ala blesses our neighborhood. Allah Ta'ala blesses our spouses, our parents, our children, our neighbors, those who we, those who we live with. Allah Ta'ala bless your community as a whole. Wa ma alayna illa al balagul mubid.